Hey, this is Anthony, and uh, you're going to check out the S99 podcast. I think this is their second podcast. They're going to jam out for a little bit, for a second for you. It's Sako and Adam. There you go. Welcome to Project S99, everybody. I don't know which camera we'll look into, but we'll start it off. We just How many cameras do we got here today? <laughs> Enough. <laughs> this Enough. one, this one, that one. <laughs> that one. Look at this camera, that one. Tell them what plans you guys got going on. Don't the toilet cam. <laughs> the to- oh, gosh. <laughs> what? We have a toilet cam live feed straight to the toilet. <laughs> um, just kidding. So I want to just start off with that jam session there. Um, a, I don't t- I'm don't. I'm not really a drummer, and... I could barely hear anything, so I said... You first had a off, general idea of what... What did you guys want to talk about? That, well, first let me just introduce you. Because people are probably wondering who no, you even are. Nah, nah, who are you? Way. You're you're a king among men. Yeah. I'm, you are... I'm a, uh, I guess if I had to put a title on it, I'm just like a social engineer. <laughs> you know? I guess that's, that's what I would call myself, if anything. <laughs> A social engineer. Yeah. Okay. Bro, what does that mean? A Do social you... engineer or a or a a, a brain massager. Uh, I'm thinking that. Right now. You know, that's massage? actually I'm like. <laughs> have you ever got a brain massage, dude? If someone asked me that, I'd be at first like, but then once I started thinking about it, I'd be like, my brain could use massage from all this thinking. Mental fl- a mental flosser. A mental floss. Floss your creases. So you're a king oh. that flosses people's yeah, yeah, creases? I I, so what, I, you, know, you know, just what, the usual kind of... What was that point you wanted to talk about again, Sako? <laughs> anyway. I'm just saying, no, I'm Anthony lives with us. Yeah, He's yeah, one of yeah. our roommates. Said he works graveyard, but... Uh, yeah, that's the other stuff is true, too, though. Yeah, the other stuff is true. He's a king of flossing your Brains. brain. Take that home with you. Think about it. Um, <laughs> and uh, we pulled him in because... We thought it would be fun to put um, put him on the spot, but now we're regretting half of it. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's okay. We're gone. We've gone too far. <laughs> We've gone too far. I am the spot. Fucking hair <laughs> Here's what I want to know: Who do you think are some of the most influential artists today, regardless of oh. genre, but influential Dude. artists? Most influential artists, I think. Uh, I think Linkin Park influenced me to go into the rock direction. Because they had that rap rock. I said right now, Sako. Oh, right now. Oh. Sako, he, see, Sako doesn't keep tabs with the mainstream, the pop. Like, he has I'm not no. a pop guy. Adam is my pop guy. I said, Adam, what's, what's what are new? The kids what's the band? What, are, to? what does Israel listen to these days? I got what are you one. Asking? Go ahead. Right now? Yeah, so. Well, I don't think there's a lot of, like, super influential artists right now, like, that are making. Like making music that's big that people are like like waiting on their releases and stuff, and I think that's like just a side effect of how like open that uh music industry has become because of stuff like YouTube, SoundCloud, and all that. So there's so much stuff out there. But I was gonna say, if we talking about like last several years, I think Kanye West is like one of the most influential people in general. Do but, you think so? But music, yeah. Uh, especially because, look, hip-hop music is, like, the most popular genre of music right now, and for a while now it's been, and Kanye is, like, a huge influence on that, and he turned it in a direction that it was, like, going in one direction, and he, like, turned it. Like, it happened a little bit slowly, but he did, and then on top of that, he's always been in the media, He's all, his music when it, whenever he drops the album it's like a big event you know he's always in the media he's always 
in like um, any kind of celebrity culture stuff going on. He's always, it, whether it's like, and he's polarizing because sometimes he's saying things that people don't agree with or whatever, but he's always getting talked about. So well, I think that's a big part of it is just relevancy when it comes to your persona and who you are. And how do you think he's doing? Because, like, these days, I mean, the only thing is, well, recently I know there was the whole um, people talked about, like, possible divorce and whatnot. Do you think that those are things? Because he's a smart dude, you know, like, if if this was uh, some kind of, it, it would, it's a weird timing for a publicity stunt if it was, but do you think it's that? Or do you think that that is all I don't really? Know, I, don't think, I don't think he, like, from... What I think, honestly, is I don't think he's doing any of this stuff on purpose to, like, generate publicity. I just think that he's just that kind of person. He's, like, um, I wouldn't call him a genius in the sense of, like, that he's he's able to keep a completely stable life going all the time. I mean, he's managed to do okay, though. So, But I feel like it's more in this way that he's so eccentric and so interesting of a person that people are drawn to him drawn to hear him talk and his ideas on things even if they don't agree with him or whatever um i think that he says things that make people think a little bit um i think that he's just that kind of person i remember this one time i watched this uh video in his interview with him and his jimmy kimmel right and you know um jimmy kimmel he's pretty political uh, in his show and stuff and he doesn't like trump and so he's like trying to get kanye to rag on trump with him kind of like pushing that or kind of because that was after Kanye had the MAGA hat and all that stuff, and it was, like, mm-hmm. this big deal. And so he was trying to kind of poke at that, and um, he asked Kanye, um, he asked him this specific question, like, why do you like Trump or something like that, right? And uh, Kanye stopped and, like, was thinking, and everybody started laughing at him. Uh, uh, um, the host, Jimmy Kimmel, he's, mm-hmm. he kind of was like, oh, I got you, you know, kind of thing. And But when I saw that, I was like, he's just thinking. Like, why are we yeah. laughing at somebody that's thinking about what they're about to say? I think that you people that stop and think about what they're about to say, that's that's a good thing. I, I think the people should, more people should do that. If you think that you should have a canned response to everything, ask somebody about something, and they just have this, like, canned you know, response they have to it. They're just like, oh, I'm going to say this after he asks me this or after he says this, I'm going to say this. But I think that to stop and think about it, that shows like that there's stuff going on in his head at least, you know? Well, no, that's interesting because, yeah, like with what you're saying there, it it does feel like that kind of the question, main question being like, you know, who's influential right now? And it doesn't it, you feel like there's that many people. Mm-hmm. So, And then when someone's like – either speaking anything that's different of just whatever, like that same noise it's coming to, it's instead of now looked at it, it's given a chance, it's almost like the, anything that's different, no matter what, is almost kind of just, oh, that's different, I don't like that. It seems like people, maybe, I thought it was just closing themselves off to uh, essentially newer things. Like to me, the newest artist that I could say I actually started listening to was Juice World. And that was until he already passed. Yeah. Um, and then I heard his music and I was like, dude, this dude's like, I'm, I'm sad that I didn't learn about him until after. I think it's interesting, too, because I think that before he died, a lot of people kind of ragged on him and stuff. Because I think in hip hop music, especially, there's this weird thing where it's like, like you have these people that are like, gatekeeper kind of people where they're like, nah, it's not hip hop unless it has this or this or that. And, I mean, maybe you could say that his music was not really hip-hop music, whatever, but you have to accept, I think, this is happening with hip-hop right now, and, like, it happened with rock before, too, where it's, like, kind of just have to accept that it's going to evolve and change, and then that's, like, rock music was, like, metal or whatever first, and you had these bands, like, even a band like Black Sabbath or something like that, you could say that. Oh, well, like, I'm sure that when they came out, there was people that were like, that's not real rock music. It's well, like, that's de- the, I don't know. I don't know when I, cause I don't, you know, like I'm not a music <laughs> like expert or anything, but I don't know. Like were the Rolling Stones before Sabbath? Was that happening before? Or was that like right around the same time? Oh, dude, this one, we need that person on the computer yeah. look updates. Cause yeah. yeah, but I'm just saying like <laughs> their sound probably, you know, alienated some people from that genre. And so I think it's happening because that's when rock was becoming the most popular genre of music. So now hip hop is like the most popular genre of music. But the thing is that that's going to make it so that it's so accessible to so many people. They're going to start doing weird stuff with it. And some of the stuff you're going to like, some of the stuff you're not going to like. But I'm not one of those people that's like, this is not real hip hop because, it, you know, this or that. I don't really have any criteria for what kind of music I like. 
besides like sonically if it sounds good does it sound good mm-hmm. to me okay i like it i i could say it's good or bad or whatever there's different qualities that i would you know put to it but if it sounds good then it sounds good and i think with juice world's music too it's like it just sonically it sounds good he used a lot of like live instruments and you know his stuff was more singing and stuff i know he can rap and stuff too but i liked it i liked it a lot i started listening to it before he died and everything so when he died i was like and this other thing too, man, this culture that's happening right now too, I feel like it's a lot more dangerous for like young artists in that in that world because I think that um drugs is so like such a crutch for a society at this point. Because his was Percocet, right? Yeah, it's like the, he wasn't doing like cocaine or like weed. I mean he's probably smoking weed and stuff, but he wasn't doing like that street drugs he was doing like pharmaceutical drugs and those are things like where how do we know what happens to you when you take those because somebody started taking them first to treat whatever was going on with them i think that it's just showing that people are like self-medicating that's just Mm -hmm. a thing that he was doing to make himself if you listen to his music you know that he was he was struggling with some kind of depression or something so i think that taking all that stuff doing that stuff it's like self-medicating it's like numbing yourself or Man, I want. I don't like feeling like this. I want to feel like this. And you have a pill for all that stuff, and then you have that much money. You got all that stuff going on. You have access to all those things. So, I think it's like it sucks, man. See, so, yeah, no, and another thing too. Let me ask, Sakura. Do you know who Juice World is? No idea. Nope. <laughs> Sakura, you gotta you gotta nope. listen to some of that after this, because I, I I didn't know. To, and then I started hearing the song. I was like, oh okay. And then uh, Mariah would play like uh, twenty times, and then after mm-hmm. a while, it just started getting stuck in my head, and then. When his new album dropped, I was like, this is good. And he was featured. He's, like, uh, got quite a few features with, um, like, there's that song, Hate Me, Hate Me, Hate Me, <laughs> bet, 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 you know? You heard that one? Is that Ellie, Ellie Gobb? Gobb. Gobb. Ellie Gobb. <laughs> um, but, so, with, with Juice, because to me, that's, uh, as far as, as an artist, like, he, in that hip-hop community, like, I really saw him talking about his struggles, his depression, like yeah, all these things, yeah. and I feel that that's not something that's very commonly like talked. It's usually I think that it's like I think there was things like that before, but those artists that were doing that, like okay, so like um, and the only thing close to that maybe in like earlier hip hop, it's like Biggie or Scarface talking about like the negative side of being like a gangster or like a drug pusher or something like that right so i had like nwa come out and they like i'm i don't listen i haven't listened to all their music so i don't know but for a lot of what i heard from them it's like kind of glorifying it like and not really showing the downside to what could happen when you're living that kind of life and then you had people like scarface and biggie and stuff where they would still brag about things and be boastful or even glorify things i would say but they also had songs that were like oh man this stuff that i've done is haunting me or like it's gonna get me thrown in jail or whatever so there is that stuff happening but then like in the 2000s this whole thing took over where i was like all your whole image had to be like gangster and you and also had to all this jewelry you know excess of like material things and there's a place for like whatever i don't i'm not even one of those people that's like that's bullshit you know they shouldn't you know that's that's you know whatever like i i think there's room for everything but it became where the to the point where it was like you have to do that, and that's why I was saying Kanye, yeah. where he kind of took it in another direction. He still had songs that were kind of materialistic and stuff like that, but a lot of his songs were just fun, just fun songs, songs, and then songs about you know struggling with things and stuff like, and and it just had a lighter tone to it, and so I think that it that he's the divergence that happened at that time that made it a little bit more, you know, like he could go in that direction again. And I think I even saw an interview with Juice World where he was talking about Kanye and talking about how he influenced him and that um, album 808s and Heartbreaks. Mm -hmm. was so different than what anybody else was doing. But if you go back and listen to it, it sounds a lot like what, like these, a lot of these hip hop artists are doing now, like Juice World or maybe even like um, Lil Uzi Vert or something like that, you know? Like it's um it's more sing songy. It's more about the melody than yeah. lyrical content or anything like that. Because and I think it seems it seems like we're getting away from that. You know, back before they get into the different movements, right? They're back in the hyphy day movement, remember that? But and then it went to like <laughs> oh, yeah, Sako about it. Like he's the one. Yeah, yeah. Sako had, Sokka had dreads <laughs> and he was whipping Check. the car around. Um, but no, I got. 
so from there and then to kind of, you know, then there was like, I know like the mumble rap and I know that got like a lot. To me, I feel like mumble rap is the country rap. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why, why is that? Well, because I feel like majority of people are like, the same thing like, well, for myself, like, I like rap, but I'm like, I like it when it's like, like, well, and certain ones, let me take it back because certain I know I'm attacking an entire genre here, uh-huh. and I'm not trying to go that route. I mean, Mama um, Rap, but like, but it's it's kind of like 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 uh, even e- looking back, emo music, right? Um, the whole I wasn't a big My Chemical Romance fan in high school. Actually, I didn't like emo music. I didn't. I didn't like it either. I though. actually came back and started like, but that's at me the too, time. Me too. I was yeah. like, I was like, Taken Back Sunday, like what? Sunday. Take Back Sunday was I didn't like, jam. I didn't, like they were okay, but I didn't like like. But, but I, just I didn't to like the. Dance. I just didn't like the <laughs> image and the whole. Yeah, so I went, and that's and that's the thing too, because I think at that point, like looking back, that wasn't my style at all, and so I'm like, wait, maybe like is it because that's like nothing of who I am as a person that that music reflects, so I don't connect to it. Uh, but I was thinking maybe that's it, or maybe I just hate out sounds. But yeah, these days now, I'll, I'll I just didn't want to be categorized as emo. I was like, I don't want to. Say yeah, yeah, yeah. No that's a, that's that's a big part of it. I think. <laughs> I'm not emo. Don't. I feel like it's like it's hard. like you don't. Emo's not something you accidentally get cat. I feel like you have to dye your hair black. <laughs> like, I don't just come to school like, oh, shoot, I went shopping in Hot Topic yesterday and I but have I, this outfit. But like, I also feel like, like, there's different... Like, I, when I would hear that stuff, I always I thought it always sounded pretty similar. And pr- it just sounded... Here, let me do this. Gonna, oh, wait, that's the, what's it called one, huh? Yeah, yeah, you can't win. Okay, hey, bro, I got you. He's going to draw. Oh, oh, is it? Oh, there you go. An idea. Shazam. Go ahead. Yeah, I feel like um, I thought a lot of it sounded the same. You know, like I don't know, it just a lot of it sounded the same. But then, I think in every genre of music, there's like the respected artists and the not respected ones and stuff like that. I mean, well, and that too. I I think on that it comes with the times, and then just because it feels like once one gets through, a floodgate of other yeah, artists come through. Yeah, behind exactly. It. And so, like, because I think there, and Which, then at the time too, there's probably so many different ones. You're like, what? The, and then you hear one or two, and then you're just kind of like, uh. Um, but going back to yeah, it seems like once that gets big, then the industry folks are like, pump them out, get everything yeah. like this here. Let's put all these things and out. That's funny too because you know. I don't. I wonder if the industry, like, let's we'll call it just the industry or whatever. You, but you know what everybody's talking about. They say that. Um, I wonder if that has more control right now or less control of of what's being pushed out. Maybe it has the same, but because the internet, they're mm-hmm. kind of like they have to scramble to find what's because there's so much new stuff pops up so much now that it's like you're not just gonna find one and be like, okay, every start pumping out the same guy over and over again. And so I feel like. I feel like it's bad for them right now. I feel like they don't have a yeah. hold on anything, and like it's hard and for them to put up their own stuff anywhere too. Yeah, like they don't need to. We don't. You don't need to go through that. Yeah, I think streaming stuff is like the. It's really the future. I don't think record labels need to be a thing anymore. You know, uh, they can come on the show. Anyone, if you're watching, hey, if hit us I, up. I ain't saying. I ain't saying. You know, <laughs> that uh, nothing bad about record labels, but. Uh, <laughs> No, the, like these days, I think record labels are like the. E- no, nah, they are bad, actually. They like, are. they're not. No. <laughs> I think record labels are great. They're great? Yeah. Well, I mean. Look, the record label is the guy who knows the industry and who to talk to and how to get you moving. You could do it so yourself. So they have the connection. Well, but you can do that... it yourself, or you can well, get signed by label and get a ton of help from people who uh, know other people across the world. That's get true. Get you tours. I get think, you funding up front. It's there's a win. Do, do you think to there's it a predatory? A do you think there's a predatory part to it at all? Like a like a record label, like um, things like courting artists and trying to entice them to be on their label, and then um, doing things like um, advances and stuff like that. Like, like the uh, cash check almost, or like, I mean, not even mean like not CD stuff, but just it's like stuff that's out in the open, like. We're going to give you, you know, this much money. You need to get it done by this time. And then also things like, because I don't know how similar it is to the movie industry where you'll have a producer look over it and be like, oh, okay, change this. Okay, people don't like, oh, let's, I'm, I guess it's not the same, but. You're talking about like, I don't think it's the same as it was back in the day. you got to think about it like you have to compete 
against other people. So you're telling me I can't have my own creative content and I have to go with what you say and you're the label? Like, I don't think it's... That's it exactly that way how it is. Well, no. oh, you mean these days? These days, it's I mean, completely different. I could see that. I could see it If I'm a yeah, label, yeah. there's... If I'm a label, I'm already going to have a band that's going to send me their demo of what it already sounds like. Mm-hmm. I have it already recorded and then I go, okay, let me take those tracks and, and make it better whether it's just EQ or it's <clears throat> adding an extra instrument to it with their permission because you have to agree. Or that person can walk and put their own music somewhere else and you don't make the money off of what you think is good talent. So at today, I think a record label is a benefit and because they don't hold complete power over you anymore. Mm-hmm. That makes any well, sense. Well, they still, I mean, they still do have that power. Like, if you're well, talking if about If you're contract. going to, like, well, Sony you, you Entertainment, hear, they're going to do... But, but then that's the thing, like, it seems like all, all, all the, like, lower record labels, the ones that aren't backed by the, you know, big companies, it seems like those have either fallen or it's just they're getting to a point where it's like they're not going to... Because they're then stuck in the middle between... F- you see self-distributing now being youtube you know there's the whole like thing with chance rapper like how uh, he kind of blew through so like with people doing that uh, pretty much the only reason i think to see signing a label is oh you're you actually know like you know oh you know the guy that worked with you know uh kanye or coldplay or like at that Mm -hmm. point but you're you're not talking about your average you know, Joe's playing a band or even like kind of mediocre. You're talking about, hey, we're going to sign you because they want you to be the next big superstar. But even then you hear you hear a lot of stories of record labels literally like holding artists, uh, their songs hostage. And they well, that's literally because legally the artists, they can't even release their own music. Sure. But that's you as an artist got to protect yourself. Like, OK, <laughs> how many how many of you guys go install software? And it's like, do you agree to this license agreement? And it just I agree. Exactly. Every As an time. artist, every you, time I, right now the I would read already. over everything. I would just be like, "Nah, let me let me check this out." You know, like, what am I agreeing to? And then if you agree to it, that's on you. You're being held hostage because you're messing with some other person's business that you agreed, and they spent all this money and all this time on you, and you aren't at, do like doing what you agreed to do. So you think that that's on the artist? Like that's your fault. Once you agreed, so what what, 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 what would you suggest then if you were, if you, if you knew an artist and they're like, Oh, this, this record label's trying to sign me, you know, do you think they should have a, what are the terms? That's that's my question is like, what's the terms? Like, are you going to say, Hey, we're going to promote you and whatever net value comes out of it, we're going to take 30% or is it going to be something like, Hey, uh, whatever comes out of it, like we get the first one hundred fifty thousand. They, they should have some, and then you can start getting money. It, right? Like that stuff. Like you got to start asking questions of what are you signing up for, and is the deal best for you? So you'd have somebody with you, right? Because no, I, I would read over it. Well, I, I know you would, but I'm saying a lot of people that are getting signed like two record artists, labels are young kids that right, and they don't know business. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I'm saying. So you, we would have somebody with you, right, to look over it, a manager. Or something like that. Well, it's not even like... Well, the thing is, Sakura, too, it doesn't even matter if it's not what they ask. Like, if they just don't like it, they're like... Like, you... Well, then you agreed for them to dis- to make be the last person to decide whether they like it or not, and it gets pushed. I, I, you know I think saying? the like, better question... It's based on the deal that you're signing. Do you think that that's... The, so the way everyone talks about, you know, the music industry and how it's changing, right... Do you think that then towards the end, whenever things get figured out, it's still pretty much going to be the same thing? How you know, just now take these different things, replace with YouTube or however they're connecting. But what I'm trying to get to here is you got your f- points for should, the label. Should that be? Let, let me explain. If you want to be a big star, you have to have money, because at the end of the day, everything comes down to not necessarily your product. It comes down to how much marketing you can do mm-hmm. and how much you can shove that song down somebody's face. That's really what it comes down to. Just play and a it record label freaking Ross has ever. that ability if they have the money to do it. You can be played at Ross. You can be played at Walmart. You can be played at your Taco Bell. I don't, you can be played everywhere to where you're just hearing that song over and over because you're funding it. You're paying the people to play that. And then in return those things get used, that your song gets popular. Not because it's necessarily a good song, it's because you put money into it. You as an independent label, Chance the Rapper got big, right? You, you put his own stuff up. 
But is he Kanye big? That could be debate. Like it's is he Kanye big? No, it's there. Yeah. Like, he's not. He's young. He's young. He's not Kanye big. He's not Beyonce big. He's not Jay Z big. But uh, Kanye. He's not. But Kanye. I think Kanye. A lot of that is just his own doing. Yeah, but still, it was the label pushing no, yeah, all yeah. that stuff. I'm just. I'm telling you that. But but you will never get as big but, as somebody with three billion dollars or three million dollars okay. to shove down marketing to across the world and then pay for your tour to go play at these shows and piggyback off of Maroon 5's gig and piggyback off of Metallica's gig. You're not going to get the same coverage but without is, a label. This is what it is. There is a lot of people, though, that do sign to those big levels that never get big. Like, the guys that sign, we just sure. talked about Kanye, yeah. guys will sign to, like, Rock Nation, never get big, never really have music put out just because they get put on the shelf. Or um, one of the worst ones I... I think it's like a shady or is it Dre? Whatever Dre's is like, um, I'll be listening to artists, hip hop artists that have like a mixtape or something. Oh, this dude's dope, John Connor. This, this rapper, John Connor. Like, oh, this guy's really dope. You know, I like his music and everything. And then he gets signed to that label, and I was like, all right, bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> and then I uh, sure. nothing, nothing, forever. So, so, do you think, um, as far as for the label, it sounds like then they should be just more of a bank. Like the way you're talking, they're a bank financing, but so, they also lead you in what you got to do. Because where I'm getting at is, if there was changes and we could change the you know, the major, because you're right. Like in order to put on a worldwide tour, you would need funding. You need these things marketing. You need an upfront cost to do it. But mm-hmm. if you could change it and say, for example, let's say you make it to you, you know get a following, could you then go to a bank? get a loan and I, I know we're talking about like millions of dollars here but if you're at a spot like hey yeah I'm, I'm make it you know this is how my current you know whatever number if statistic, the bank wants to finance if they yes, want to do that and then but they wouldn't so that's not well, that's what I'm talking about it's changed like this is something everyone know everyone what are you, say, what are you saying exactly what's the point uh, what I'm give trying give me your point because I'm trying to tell you my point is that I don't think labels are necessarily as evil as people make them out to be number one Number two, I could agree with that. You get yourself signed into yeah. a contract that you didn't want to read over. That's on you as an artist. Number three, you ain't gonna get as big being solo. Like Macklemore was good for one or two albums, and I don't know where where he went. That's true. Where did I he saw go? Him on that one Dave show. But <laughs> I, but like I said, I, I feel like dicky. people like just you know people that are the um, people that are buying these products, people that are consuming consumers. There you go. They they also have a big hand in that though. It's not just the record label, not just because the re- it's probably because people started to not like him as much as they were at first or whatever initially, and the record label saw that and they're I like, say okay. the same thing about Eminem. <laughs> yeah, but I, I agree. <laughs> I'm just saying, Eminem's still big. If he puts out an album, he, but that's because he, he has recognition. He, he gets shoved down your face because he has marketing behind so, him. And he has the money to push the songs. I actually had I had to go out of my I don't typically listen to the radio, but I had to go out of my way I actually had to look him up on YouTube. His last like the Godzilla song that came out. He's like, a, yeah, because I, I, I think you're still thinking in the past a little bit. I don't think he's as big as you think anymore. Who, yeah. Oh, Eminem. He's yeah. not as big as he used to be, but yeah. you still hear his stuff. There's but like, I didn't hear it willingly. Like he popped up on media. He popped up <laughs> on my YouTube. I mean, yeah, he he it's about. like it just shows starts showing up. I, I guess my point is, is that... Because Google saw your hair. Yeah, maybe. The camera saw your hair. <laughs> oh, he's back. We got him back. He's we got back. him back. I guess my, my whole point is that you can... Um, uh, I'm back. Yeah. All right, so we're going to have to end here because we're on low battery. Yeah, uh, right. well, I think that one's already out. Right there. Most of them are done. I forgot to charge. We did this super I'm sure this was minute. super entertaining for everybody, too. So, don't worry. So, um, <laughs> anywho, we'll, I'll tell you what. Thank you guys for coming out here. Sako, I hate you. I hate you Anthony, too. Anthony, <laughs> thank you very much. Israel, thanks for joining us. I appreciate you your, guys. All your input. Israel, tell us your favorite band before we go. Your favorite band right now. Your favorite genre. PP music, got it. Okay. <laughs> and then let's, let's jam them on out, Sako.